Cool. All right. Now, are you ready for a couple of features inside the menu that are really going to make it hot? Verge, can you bring up the um, SDI out of this camera for me, please? Sweet. So we're going to jump into the menu setting and just show you a couple of quick ones. Number one, just like in the EX cameras, Canon has some let me just flip this over, slow and quick motion settings. So in the camera setting, I'm going to go down to record mode. Under others. <laughs> Under others, you jump into record modes, special record, and we can turn on slow and fast motion. And then down in slow and fast motion. Because I'm in 1080 right now, we're going to be able to dial up to 30 frames a second or down to 12 frames a second. Now, if I was in 720, if I was in 720 30p or 720 24p, I could dial this all the way up to 60, all right? So my camera is going to play back at 24 frames a second, but it's going to record 60 frames per second. So you can do better than 50% slow motion right in the camera. You can also play that back in the viewfinder and see how it looks. It's really cool. Uh, I am going to cancel out of this because the next menu feature that I want to show you has to do with the lens. You remember from Canon's still cameras, such as the 7D, that there are some really cool autofocus features in the cameras. This camera has one that's, uh, that's garnered a lot of attention from our still photographers. This is called face tracking. All right, now, in order to, to get this done exactly right, I'm going to have to ask for Chucky to stand up. The first thing to do to get your face tracking on is change your focus from manual, where you can see the marks and the, uh, manual and the uh, mechanical stops, to automatic. So boom. Um, that's right here. There's a little button where I can shift from full manual to automatic focus. I am now in automatic focus. Let's go back to the menu settings. I'm going to go into camera settings, auto focus mode. Uh, let's turn it on. Now, back in auto focus mode, <laughs> I'm going to go to face, and it's on. We're cool, right? So now when I jump out of the menu, look at that white tracking bar on Chuck. Wait a minute. He's moving around. I'm not touching the camera, but oh, I went out. you see his face is being tracked by this camera. So that means that the camera is picking out Chuck's face. So this is great for wedding, uh, wedding photographers that have guys that have a little trouble keeping focus. Or if you're at a school play, for instance, and you just want your son in the picture and not anybody else. I'm not touching the camera at all, but somehow this camera is tracking Chuck on his face so it's keeping him in focus and uh, not paying as much attention to the rest of the field. Chucky, that was awesome, man. Thanks for your help. My parole officer liked that one. Cool. Yes, your parole officer. Uh, it kind of makes you want to fire a missile when you see that tracking bar lock on right like that. Anyway, so now I would like to direct our attention back to Sherry in the chat room and let's fire off that question you had about the Canon 7D. Okay, the Canon 7D because a couple more have come in. So when you're ready, Jesse, I, let's hear you're it. doing such a great job. I didn't want to interrupt your flow. Um, the 7D question was, um, separate from what you're discussing this evening, um, Sweetland DJ would like to know, um, if there's a firmware update that will extend the record time from 12 minutes and ask, since we've had the Canon specialist here, um, if there has been any release of um, upgrade to extend that record time. Oh, no problem. Uh, no, there isn't. Um, it, I don't think it'll be a firmware. It has to do with the camera and the way it's built on the 12 minute uh, uh, minutes that it records. I'll take that as a no. All right. Thank you. What's the next one? Next question. Um, <clears throat> the next question is, which of the Sony and JVC cameras is this one competing with? The Sony camera that the XF is competing with is going to be the EX1. Uh, it's priced similarly and shaped similarly. A couple of advantages that the XF305 has over the EX1 are right here on this professional jack pack. 
Check this out. We're coming out HDSDI, which the EX1 does have. But you'd have to step up to the EX3 to get these features right here. This is Genlock input, timecode input. Uh, oh, right, excuse me. So it's Genlock and timecode, basically. When I reveal these BNC connectors here, this is for Genlock, where you can sync up multiple cameras if you're doing a multi-camera shoot and you've got a switcher and you have several record devices. You have a single device that's making a sync signal telling everybody when to start doing their 60 frames per second, right, when frame zero needs to be. Uh, you, can, you can include this camera in that Genlock daisy chain. Additionally, there's a time code jack. So if you need to match up two cameras with time, lo uh, with time code, say you're doing a two camera shoot and you're gonna go back and edit later, you know, you wanna cut from one to the other, you've gotta have your time code matched up. This jack right here will give you time code in or out. That's a menu setting. Another thing uh, while we're on this subject real quick I want to mention. On the back of the camera you've got HDMI output, USB for capturing your footage, you've got your standard you know, red, white, and yellow composite output right here, a headphone jack, and behind this door a component output. But check this out. Previously there were little rubber covers on, uh, on all of these jacks. I left this cover on just to show you something that I really appreciate Canon doing for us. This rubber cover comes all the way off, all the way out like that. Easy, because those get in my way. I'm always plugging and unplugging cables you know, to test stuff out for my customers. And it goes back in just as easily like that. So if you like the rubber pieces, you can keep them. If you don't like them, you can take them off. And if you're like me, always having to put them on and take them off, it's easy as pie. I'm going to do that one more time for you. Take that rubber thingy out. Bam, it's gone. Put the rubber thingy back in. Pretty awesome. Just like you want it. Cool? Now, um, I know, oh, did you have a couple more questions for me, Sherry, or are we running OK? Um, yeah, a couple more questions. Um, since we're talking about time code, um, there's uh, Emery's Roberts says that um, this chat person is um, a longtime user of XH. A1, yep. and also the 7D, and loves the tapeless format of the 7D, but, she's de but they're desperately missing the ability to have the time code. How do the new MXF files handle time code? I'm not sure if you just answer that or if you want to get into that a little more. So the XF, the XF files, uh, they're actually MXF, media exchange format files. Okay, they're 50 megabits per second. You can dial it down to get more time on your card, go to 35 or 25 megabits a second. We never recommend that. We always recommend shooting at the highest quality you can. The time code in the camera can be generated to be record run or time of day, you know, sort of um, free run. So just like you're used to in a professional camera, all the way back to beta cam and, and before that, this camera's got a built-in time code generator or it will accept time code coming in this little jack right here. Now, um, the Time code is recorded right onto the file. When you ingest the footage into your nonlinear editing system, that time code's locked up all the time. You're not going to lose it. Additionally, because this is that MXF format, you can put more metadata, not just the time code, but camera and shooter data that tells you what the format you were shooting in, um, also the serial number of the camera so you can figure out between shooters, all that kind of metadata stuff that you're going to need to piece your multi-camera shoots back together. Cool. Thanks. And thank you for watching the show. We really appreciate it.